Yeah, wave your hand indeed if you're enjoying CPL 2023 brought to us by Republic Bank and it was Bacchanal in Port of Spain on Wednesday night as the Trimbega Knight Riders bounced back from a loss a day earlier to secure victory over the Barbados Royals in match 20 of the competition. Nicholas Puran sent fans into a frenzy, blasting a 53 ball on beaten 102. The knock included 10 sixes and 5 fours at a strike rate of 192. 2.45. Andre Russell added 39 while Martin Guptil contributed 37 as the Knight Riders went on to post 208 for 6 in their 20 overs. Jason Holder was the pick of the Royals bowlers with 2 for 39. TKR would not have taken their total for granted knowing the Royals produced a record run chase one match earlier but the Karen Pollard led outfit managed to restrict the Royals to 166 for 7. Carl Mears top scored with 7 from 45 deliver spinners. Akil Hussain and Bokar Salem Keel took two wickets each for the Knight Riders. An impressive victory for the Knight Riders, Lance. Yeah, and you know, always great to see Puran displaying the kind of batting skills that we saw last night. I, I remember a 2014 ICC under 19 innings that he had played against the Australians when I think he gained global recognition, Ricardo, because it was a knock of the ages. There were many international commentators watching the match who suggested that this under 19 game that they were watching had produced one of the best innings that ever seen in cricket period. That Not was the 140 odd what the under 19 against World the Australians. Cup. See, yeah. they were 32 for 4 when he came in. He pulled them to 208 all out, um, 143, 14 fours and 6 sixes and um, the Aust Australians won the match. And Nicholas Puran was still named man of the match. The Australians won comfortably by five wickets. But Puran's innings was so commanding and dominant and attractive that he won the man of the match honor. And I've been saying on this show for years, Ricardo, that Puran is a genuine superstar ability kind of player. I just want to see him being more consistent and produce the kind of batting that we saw last night because this is a player with immense talent. Yeah, surely a player with immense talent and you speak about consistency. We have been seeing some amount of consistency in recent months coming off the USA T20 League where he was fantastic there, came into the West Indies set up for the series against India and as we now know performed well enough to have earned a nomination for player of the month and uh, here he is with a fabulous century for the TKR last night against the Barnes. Barbados Royals in a match that TKR would have been desperate to win I think because they would have been coming off defeat in the previous game and Nicholas Puran set it up brilliantly for them which is what you want in situations like this Lance you 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 in tournaments um, especially when you're coming off defeat um, and you're looking to to get back on track you need your big players you need your star players to step up and lead the way and that is what Nicholas Puran did last night it was a majestic innings um, and it was definitely worth watching. Yeah, and drama as well because there was a close run-out incident with his captain, Kyron Pollard. In the end, he was the man that, that, that retained the strike. Um, you know, so things could have gone the other way if, if he was run out in that play. So that added another dimension to the drama of last night's match. But um, the TKR, when they are in the mood, and especially when they are in their home fans, can be a pretty tough team to beat. And we're uh, establishing the fact now that um, Dwayne Bravo, who has been um, a, a star player for TT franchises, although he did you have sojourns at, at other franchises, um, isn't playing. He hasn't played the last two, two matches for sure. And um, um, his skills as a death bowler and just general cricket brain and how he thinks the game out and, and um, enthusiastic about getting his team pumped up to deliver uh, match winning results. I'm not sure how much he will play later on in the tournament. But um, I'm really happy to see TKR playing the way they did last night. Yeah, when you look at this TKR team, Lance, I think you'll notice that you have a number of genuine superstar players. Um, some might say superstar players of 
yesteryear because you look at the quality of a Martin Guptill, a Pollard, Andre Russell, Sunil Narayan, yes. um, Nicholas Puran, still very much current as someone who is part of the, the West Indies setup still. But these players are genuine world class players. I think the questions coming into this tournament around the, the TKR setup um, would be whether these players would um, come great. Um, come good for them this campaign and so far things are working out quite well even someone like Andre Russell who I don't think has had uh, striking results in recent times has come to the party in a big way um, along the way getting his 400th wicket um, in T20 cricket but last night with a valuable 39 and we're seeing Russell as well once more bowling being able to bowl full complements of four overs and um, showing some fire and pace once again so I think the signs are very good for TKR here and Sunil Narayan um, looks menacing again in, in in my opinion so yeah. I think the signs are very good for this TKR setup um, I know you pointed to the Guyana Amazon Warriors yesterday and how they are looking Lance <laughs> but I'm starting to like the look of TKR because of the experience but also because the experience in this tournament is also showing that there is some amount of form there yeah and when I spoke about the Guyana Amazon Warriors and being impressed with how they are playing at the moment the obvious retort is that it's not Nothing new to see the Ghana Amazon Warriors <laughs> playing well in the group stages and I accept that but there's something Ricardo about how the team is playing this year that that looks different to me and I think they are the team to beat I'll go that far even though I'm an established TKR fan yeah I think there are many across the Caribbean who would hope that you're very much right and <laughs> that the Ghana Amazon Warriors can get it done as I said um, when we had the conversation with um, the, the the captain um, Imran Tahir uh, I don't think there are many across the region who would be disappointed if the Guyana Amazon Warriors got it done because I think it is very much well accepted that this is the best team not to have won this tournament in fact uh, there are those who might say um, that teams not as good have won the Caribbean Premier League so hopefully they will be able to deliver but I am starting to like the look of the Trinbago Knight Riders. Yeah and I just want to go back quickly to the poor and development because yes. um, remember he did have a, a car accident that he had damaged legs he, he suffered leg injuries and that would have stunted his development in his early 20s yeah. and it took him a little time to, to but get himself. But it's been a while. It's been I know a that while happened that's... at 19, 20. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. But I'm just saying it happened at a time when he was at the stage of rapid development. True, but can I be honest with you? Yes. My disappointment with Nicholas Puran has actually been in the last four years since okay. he, um, I, I think, secured almost yeah. a permanent spot in the limited over setup yes. um, in 2019. My disappointment has been what he has produced from 2019 since the 2019 World Cup yes. um, to okay. this year. Understood, yeah. I think he should have been better. I think he has the ability to be better. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, it's a, it's a short period, but what he's produced in recent times is a, a lot more along the lines of the type of production yeah. um, that I expect from yeah. a Nicholas Brown, because gosh, he's such a delight to watch. Yeah. All Come right, on. Mariah Ramarat, mm -hmm. she's in sweet TNT for the Republic Bank CPL. She's having all the fun, by the way, and she caught up with one of our analysts here on Sports Max, the man who delivered a wonderful bit of commentary, commentary to accompany the Rakeem Cornwall century four nights ago. We're talking about Nikki Lutam Chandani. Well, hi everyone. As you know, I'm in Trinidad and Tobago and I'm continuing to bring you all the features behind the scenes action. So you've seen Nikhil Udam Chandani on the Sportsmax Zone via Zoom. Well, today for the first time, I have the opportunity to meet him in actual person. Nikhil, welcome. Thank you so much, Maria, and welcome and hello to the Zone family. Um, great to be in person, um, but even though it's been on Zoom, it's been highly enjoyable. Yeah, Nikhil is, of course, family of the Sports Max team. So I'm here to chat with you today a bit about, you know, how you got started, just to get to know you versus what you come on the show and usually do. 
Yeah, I think um, I'm privileged this year to be working in the TV commentary aspect of the Caribbean Premier League. But for me, everything would have began about maybe 10 years ago when I was just 13. And someone, a guy by the name of Gary Bell in Barbados, just set up a camera at my club. And I was playing, we had two teams. And he just had a mic and he was like, you like to talk a lot, give this a try. And then from there, I think it just grew slowly and slowly. I started to get a lot more opportunities and then never look back and grateful now that I could be here less than 10 years later. Yeah, you're 21 and you're brilliant at what you do. Thank you so I much. I think that's amazing. So, you know, my question to you is what does preparation for a CPL match, let's say, entail? Well, for me, it's a lot because um, unlike some of the other commentators that I work with who have played the game at the highest level, for me, it's about bringing a different perspective. But also, I think having a more statistical background or base because um, I don't have the experience of, of at the very top level. So, I mean, coming into a tournament like the CPL, I could say I, I put in at least more than 24 hours of preparation. Obviously, not at one time, but... Um, and, that, and that comes out of pure excitement. I don't even use half of the stats that I write down, um, but it's just, I kind of love the aspect of being able to prepare and learn a lot about players and identify trends and, and study certain aspects and, and patterns within the game of cricket. So a lot of research and then within the tournament, it's like quick turnaround, um, but it's been a really good opportunity for me just to be able to not only prepare coming in, but then adjust the research that I have and learn new things and pick the brains of the commentators that I'm working with that have been in it for 10 and 20 years. One of the narratives coming into this interview was the fact that you paved your own pathway. Uh, I was told that initially you would, you know, fund yourself, ensure that you got around and did the necessary work to, of course, now be in this position. Talk to me about that. Yeah, well, the CPL for me as well, I mean, it's always been special. From a young child, I've been going to every single game in Barbados. And then when I got older, I was awarded the opportunity by the Barbados Tridents in the 2020 and 2021 years to be their social media correspondent, to do public relations for them. And in that time, it gave me an opportunity to meet a lot of influential people, meet a lot of players who I have good relationships with, but also sometimes sit at the back of the commentary box and learn. And then last year in 2022, um, I had a really good opportunity to do the radio coverage. Um, thanks to uh, everyone who was involved in that, um, to give me that push to be able to then not necessarily comment on TV, but still express my views via the radio, which is such a well-used platform around the region. Um, and, and that involved, you know, be flying around to the different parts sometimes, um, you know, working on a partnership where I could put up, like, put up for my own accommodation at times, but also um, have the be compensated for the matches and it just worked out really well because I saw it as a big opportunity not only to work in radio commentary but to be a door across from the TV commentators and then it gave me the opportunity to rub shoulders with Danny Morrison, Alex Jordan, Ian Bishop, Darren Ganga and, and everyone um, and just sitting out at the back I gained so much knowledge, um, information was able to learn so much and jo jokingly manifested it per se and it's cool that a year later I still am able to, you know, see the commentary box of radio, but now I'm able to work in the TV space. I know you have some moves. You, of course, played cricket. Talk to me about that experience and what do you do? Do you bowl? Do you bat? Well, I started as a wicket keeper, um, but everyone always says six foot four in wicket keeping. That doesn't make too much sense. And as I got taller, I started to bowl, do a little bit of batting. It wasn't too good, but um, obviously it didn't really work out as planned. But the cool thing for me was in the years I spent training, practicing, playing a lot of cricket in Barbados um, at the club level, at the school level, it gave me the understanding to learn a lot about the game. But also too, I think at one time in my life when I was maybe 16, I started to realize that the cricket was going in one direction and the commentary was going in another. And obviously every, every young child's dream is to play cricket for the West Indies, play for their country. Um, but I was able to then decipher that commentary can be something of a big opportunity for me. And it's sort of why I do it as well. I want to inspire children who obviously have that massive dream of playing for the West Indies. But if they don't necessarily achieve it, because at the end of the day, only 11 players can go on the field. There's still other avenues to be heavily involved in the game. And I think commentary is a perfect one just because you can be as up close as possible and as up close as you would with, as a player. And you tell the story to so many people, you know, at home watching. So you get that opportunity. Uh, can you tell us your favorite moment uh, as a commentator? It actually just happened um, a couple of days ago. Basically, one of my favorite ones, as crazy as it sounds, would have been the Netherlands winning that Super Over. And I know it was against the West Indies, but 
just the fact that I could call it um, for a nation like the Netherlands, they went on obviously to qualify for the World Cup. But a couple of nights ago when Rakim Cornwall scored that 100, yes. um, obviously I had the great, great privilege to be on air whilst he got to the 100. And just to see the backdrop and I think the way I described it, it's probably the first time and only time I, I give myself a tiny bit of credit. I'm usually hard on myself, but... I think I did well with that and I gave the moment what it deserved because it was truly a sensational innings. Yeah. Well, Nikhil, we want to thank you so much. As I said, you're Sportsmax family and, you know, I had a pleasure meeting you actually in person. Look forward to working with you some more. Thanks a lot, Maria, and thanks to the Sportsmax family. A hundred for Rakim Cornwall. The Patriots yeah. <laughs> are victims of a rock attack. We just had to play that commentary again. Nikhil Chandani, top guy, really top guy. Lance Whitaker, I wonder though, Nikhil Chandani says that he started out as a wicked keeper, did some bowling, doesn't sound like it was pretty good, admitted that the batting wasn't great. Do you suspect he could make the Sportsmax cricket team? Well, you'd have to do trials, on, on, unlike Daniel Azar. <laughs> 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 I, I would suspect he'd have to do a trial. So we, we haven't seen him. We haven't seen him, Ricardo. So we, we, he, he, he'd have to go through a trial process. <laughs> Nicola but, 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 but if he plays as well as he talks, yes. he's, he's a show in. Well, he clearly doesn't, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the sports max level is not the highest level. Well, you're struggling to make it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but, but I'm, not, I'm not young anymore, so it's difficult for me to play at the same level that I played 30 years ago. Oh, it's an age thing. Okay, I understand. Course, it has you, to be, yeah. you do have great technique, but you struggle to get the ball off the square, and I wonder if that is because of age or that's how you've always been. No, it's because, it, because I don't play frequently, so the timing is off. I play cricket once every but, three years. But I so, think you so obviously, yes. because you, you admitted that the technique is there, yes. but it's the timing. If, if I play cricket once every three years, you don't expect that I'm going to play a match and the shots are just flowing off the bat. That, that's not going to happen. But, but I, I beg to defer, Lance, because yes. I think the timing is there. What is not there is the placement. You can't <laughs> seem to pick the gaps. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to um, protract this discussion, uh, <laughs> Ricardo, but I think, I think you're being unfair because if I play, I don't play cricket regularly at all. I play football regularly. So cricket is something that I play once in a blue moon. So it's obvious that whether you want to say it's the timing or the inability to get the ball off the square, I hear my producer talking about power. But the last innings I play, I hit a couple of sixes and boundaries down at Melbourne. You did? So, but he didn't watch the match, so he, he wouldn't. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah Oh, I, I wasn't at that match. Yeah, I was actually caught on the boundary. I was out caught on the boundary. You, do you know that Melbourne is probably the smallest no, ground? No, it, it was a long boundary towards the, the southern end. That's was a it, long boundary. The only long boundary at Melbourne is deep mid-wicket. It was the boundary down at the southern end, which is it's longer than the one it, at the it, northern it, end. It was at long on? Long on, yeah, long off. And, yes, and I was but batting. Those, I was batting at the top end. But all the long on, all the boundaries, the long on, long off boundaries at Melbourne are really short, lads. <laughs> Can we continue talking about Nikola Tamchandani? No, because we, we'd be happy to have him playing for playing, playing, playing for the Sports Max team. When is our next match, by the way? And are are, are you still captain? Because I'm not sure. I I don't think anything has changed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Reminding viewers, you have a chance to win tickets to the CPL final in Guyana. It's set for September 24 with our stream to win promotion. All you have to do is download the Sportsmax app from the Google Play Store or the App Store and watch all the CPL matches live. The user with most time spent on the app wins. The promotion ends September 9. That's two days away. So you've got to get watching. You've got to get watching if you want to win the, the prizes to Guyana. Yeah, are we up on a break on the Sportsman Zone? I think we are. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Real the on, 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 real the on